Hey you guys, I'm excited to share with you the review of the Funk Audio LFE 24 Ultra. I'm Barrett and this is Specatech. Welcome to the channel. Before getting into the details and my thoughts on the LFE 24 Ultra, if you guys are into home theater and audio, now would be a great time to consider subscribing and make sure you hit that bell icon so you can be notified about my future videos. And if you do like the content guys, do me a huge favor and hit that like button. If you guys are really into home audio and home theater, make sure you check my Facebook groups out. They're very supportive groups. I've left the links down below. I also do have an Instagram, so if you guys are interested in joining my Instagram, check the link down below for that as well. For those that may have missed it, I did do an unboxing and overview of this subwoofer right here. I'll link the video in the top right hand corner of this one, so feel free to check that one out and then come back to this video after. So with my reviews, normally I keep them pretty short and simple, but in this one I'm going to give a lot more details and technical information. So let me know in the comments below if you prefer a review like this that has a lot more detail, or if you like them a little bit more short and simple. So in today's in-depth review, we are going to discuss the price, we're going to discuss the specs with some detailed information, we're going to discuss the build quality, we'll also discuss the performance with some room measurements, we're going to discuss the sound quality, and I'm also going to be giving a demo and then I'll give my final thoughts as well. So let's get started. Alright guys, so let's start with a bit of an introduction to Funk Audio. Nathan Funk, the owner and operator of Funk Audio, has made quite a name for himself amongst enthusiasts. Uh, that being said, not everybody knows of the brand Funk Audio, but you really should. Uh, Funk Audio offers a variety of high performance subwoofers and speakers and these products are all handmade by Funk Audio with quality and performance being of the highest priority. He offers a wide range of customizations as well, so if you want your subwoofer on its side, no problem. Nathan will change the amp orientation if you wish. You don't want the DSP display on the front? No problem. Nathan will put it on the back for you. Nathan also offers different finishes from the ultra premium to something a little less premium to save on cost. He will work with you and make you the perfect subwoofer for your needs and that leads us to the next topic, the price. Okay, when talking price, I can't just give you a set price and move on uh, because of what we just discussed. There's certain levels of customization to consider here. Besides the customization, I feel that to do Funk Audio justice, I have to point out a few more things. Uh, first, Funk's drivers are handmade in-house with top quality materials like the carbon fiber cone and large neodymium magnet structure. The amps are also assembled in-house as well, the enclosure is made in-house, and so on. So the point being, there is a lot of care and time put into each piece. So what I will say is this, the listed starting price for the LFE Ultra range is 9000 USD. I will also say that this price tag is reflected in the no compromise philosophy that Nathan followed when designing and building this subwoofer and all his other offerings. I would also encourage you to talk to Nathan first about what you want before taking that price as a final number. He may have other solutions with different specifications that will work within your budget. All right, so that leads us into the specs. So for those of you that aren't interested in the specs, feel free to skip ahead uh, to the next section, which is the build quality. Okay, so I did cover the basic specs in the unboxing and overview, but in the review, I do want to get a lot more into detail for those of you that want the technical specs. So the LFE 24 Ultra is the King Mama Jama of the LFE Ultra lineup and has the cream of the crop components. So let's cover them. Starting with the enclosure, depending on the unit you get, the 18 inch and 21 inch enclosures will be smaller than what I have here, and of course the 18 inch being the smallest. The LFE 24 is the largest obviously, and it comes in two different variants. A narrow version which is 26 inches wide, 35 inches deep, and 60 inches tall, and a wide version which is 35 inches wide, 26 inches deep, and 60 inches tall. The version I have here is the narrower version which is 26 inches wide, which for the LFE 24 Ultra translates into 20 cubic feet internally. It is a knotty walnut veneer dyed in charcoal with a satin top coat finish. It is made from 3 quarter inch Baltic birch with a triple layer for the front baffle. Uh, that's just for added rigidity for that massive 24 inch driver. The corners are rounded hardwood inserts. Although they are a simple touch, it really does add to the premium look. There are four circular feet at the bottom, which I use carpet sliders under to help move it around. Because this thing is exactly 287 pounds, any assistance moving it is really needed. I understand that with quality construction comes weight though. The finish and attention to detail are really something to marvel over with this enclosure, uh, but that isn't what makes it truly special. What makes it truly special is the port. Nathan has spent years perfecting this special port. Nathan is extremely meticulous about the performance and sound quality that he expects from his products. The port was designed and built by, you guessed it, Nathan at Funk Audio. Of course it is much easier to build a rectangular sharp cornered slot port uh, like what is used in most slot ported designs and subwoofers today, but nothing what Nathan does with his designs is easy, nor does he use cost or corner cutting to justify not using the best design or materials like many other manufacturers seem to use all too often. He wanted to make sure to get the best sound quality and performance out of this port as possible, and I must say he did accomplish that. This is a low turbulence port, 
To get this port as quiet as possible, uh, they smooth all the edges inside and out. In fact, they smooth more on the inside as Nathan has found it is the internal noise from ports that is the most important to eliminate. The outlet has a simple compound radius flare and inside the port curves back along a 12 inch radius using 18 millimeter thick curved laminated Baltic birch and opens into an exponential flare. All the bracing has been smoothed as well so that air turbulence is minimized inside. This reduces compression and resonances to the point where you can use the full output without any extraneous noises or limitations. So going along with the no compromise philosophy, the enclosure is built extremely well. It has a beautiful fit and finish and the port design is second to none. All right, so that pretty much sums up the enclosure. So let's move on to the driver. It is a monstrous 24 inch long throw dual voice coil driver. So here's a list of the basic specs that are listed on the website. We aren't going to cover those in too much detail, but if you wish to read them, feel free to pause it here. What we do want to talk about is what isn't listed on the website. Like the fact that the large neodymium magnet structure used in these ultra drivers is the largest to be used on any subwoofer period. At least Funk Audio is not aware of any larger ones being used. The driver is an underhung topology, which does have advantages like a more linear motor strength, but they are usually more expensive, especially when a higher excursion is needed, like with this Funk driver. Again, we are back to the no compromises. The underhung driver is known for two common downsides though. One being the lack of power handling and the other being hard to get high motor strength when you also have very high travel. Well, the design of Nathan's driver fixes both of these. The 24 inch ultra drivers can handle insane amounts of power as proven with the high power plate amp and the massive motor structure provides plenty of motor strength for the three inch peak to peak excursion. This beastly driver has a sensitivity of 93.5 decibels and I did mention in the overview video that this cone is made from four layers of pure carbon fiber. This keeps the cone material very light and extremely rigid to help keep things linear. So yet again, there we are with no compromises made with this driver. It has beyond top tier performance in all aspects and has great thermal handling. As you will see in the performance section, that translates into compression free output. But what would a massive driver capable of crazy output be without an equally amazing amplifier and DSP. So the amplifier is a class D topology and can produce 4400 watts RMS and 10,400 watts peak. It actually consists of two amp modules, uh, one 2200 watt RMS module for one voice coil and one 2200 watt RMS module for the other voice coil. The amplifier has automatic voltage switching from 115 to 230 volts depending on what voltage you're feeding it. To get every ounce of power out of this unit you will want to feed it 230 volts. The DSP software is actually fairly user friendly and is easy to access. You can access a lot of it using the display, but there's more functionality if you use the PC software. So FYI, for those wondering, the display can remain on while in use, remain on but dimmed, or have a delayed off function which turns off after about 10 seconds of not being in use. To get connected to the software, it is really easy. Uh, all you have to do is download the Windows or Mac version of the software from Funk Audio's website. You can then just plug directly to the amp using a USB cable to your PC, or you can just plug an ethernet cable from your router to the amp, and when you open the software while connected to the same network, it will automatically detect the subwoofer when you open the software. This is the way I have it set up, and it truly was easy. I literally just plugged in the ethernet cable and opened the software, and it found the subwoofer for me. The DSP functionality on Funk subwoofers is available and included across Funk Audio's subwoofer lineup. The DSP can be as simple or as in-depth as you want. It has a great selection of adjustments to make sure you can get the best response for your space. It has a parametric EQ with five filter types and 10 bands or channels. It has a high and low pass crossover with 10 slope options. It has adjustable delay, adjustable level, adjustable limiting. It has an auto on and off with adjustable time delays. There are also some great presets included when you buy the unit, like no EQ, which gives you the pure unadulterated capabilities of the driver and amp. And just like the name implies, there's no EQing whatsoever. Then there's presets like home theater, music, rock, and max extension. Max extension gives you exactly that, as much bass in the lowest frequencies as possible. And as you'll see in the performance section, you do get a lot of bass in the low frequencies. Uh, you can also save your own presets. So you can save up to 80 presets and they are simple to change on the front display or through the PC app. To change it on the front display, all you need to do is press menu and then use the dial to cycle through the options. Press the dial on the selection you want Use the dial to select yes, and then press the dial again. It's that easy. In the performance section, I will give some room measurements to give an indication of what each EQ does to the room response. All right guys, and that leads us to build quality. Funk Audio truly is a rare breed in today's manufacturing world. Everything is hand built and assembled in the Funk Audio shop from the driver and amp to the enclosure. 
Obviously some parts are ordered in to help with assembly, like the DSP and display, but all major components are made by hand with the utmost of care and precision. Throughout the spec section I'm sure you're going to notice the ongoing theme, and that is that this subwoofer is built with top tier quality as the priority. From the build materials to the design and how everything is integrated and working together, there is really nothing that I can fault on the build quality. I keep mentioning that this is a no compromise subwoofer, because it really does appear there was no compromises made when designing and building the LFE24 Ultra. The cabinet is very well made, it has a beautiful premium finish. The driver too is very well made and uses premium materials that help with performance and give the subwoofer an amazing premium badass look as well. The amplifier follows suit with a premium build and gobs of power. The built-in DSP is very helpful and adds to the quality by allowing you to fine tune it to your liking. In addition to that, each unit goes through several hundred quality assurance checks throughout the manufacturing process. In addition to the quality checks, each unit is thoroughly tested at the end of its assembly process to ensure the unit adheres to Funk Audio's stringent performance and sound quality parameters. Speaking of performance, let's discuss how this thing performs. Alright, so let's get into the section that everybody's been waiting for and that's performance. So I was provided some CEA 2010 numbers from Nathan Funk. And as you can see from this testing, the distortion levels are quite impressive to say the least. I know that these numbers were provided by Funk Audio, but Funk Audio has had some of their subwoofers tested by a third party called Database in the past and his numbers were found to be accurate. I do know that Nathan wants to get some more of his models tested by Database in the future, so I'm quite sure we can take these numbers as being accurate. Okay, so with the exception of the 10 Hz distortion percentage, the rest of the frequencies for the most part are even better than the distortion percentages you would see on a servo subwoofer like the Rhythmic FV25HP. And again, with the exception to the 10 Hz percentage, the LFE provides much less distortion levels when compared to the JTR Captivator 4000. I'm not coming down on the JTR Captivator 4000 here. It really is a fantastic subwoofer. I'm just merely pointing out that Funk subwoofers do take things to a whole new level when talking sound quality along with its staggering output. I will point out that of course there is a price difference between the subwoofers mentioned and the LFE24. But that is also to be expected with a subwoofer like the LFE24 that has a no compromise design. Okay, now that we've seen the CEA 2010 numbers, let's talk about the numbers that I was getting in my room when measured with Roo. So as you can see with the Roo measurements here, uh, what I did is I measured each of the preset EQs uh, with a volume of zero set on the AVR. And the subwoofer is set to my preferences. So this would have been with negative four gain on the subwoofer and trim level in the AVR set to negative five. Um, so let's clear them just to make it a little bit easier here for you guys to see. So starting with no EQ, uh, you do get a fairly flat response. Uh, let me point out that this is without Odyssey as well. I did not run Odyssey yet. This is just how the subwoofer would look with the settings that I gave in my room. So we're hitting at about 117 decibels here on no EQ at volume zero. Uh, and then the home theater EQ, you can see, see that things change a little bit here. You seem to get a little bit more uh, mid bass. And don't mind this 30 hertz null, that'll just be my room. Uh, so when pulling up the music, again, a slightly different response here, um, but not a huge difference. But when you pull up the max extension EQ, that's where you see the biggest difference. So you can see that I'm hitting about 126, almost 127 decibels around 11 hertz, which is pretty staggering, guys. That's, that's some crazy output in the low hertz. All right, so now that you've kind of seen what each of the presets can do, let's pull up some other measurements. So let's pull up the compression testing and let's turn it to all SPL. All right, so as you can see here with the compression testing, I started with a volume of negative nine with all the same settings that I had before. And again, this is without Odyssey. Um, so here at negative nine, you can see we're hitting about 109 decibels at 11 hertz or so. And by the time I got to volume plus six on the AVR, we were hitting about 123 decibels at 11 hertz and still no compression. So that's one thing I really wanted to point out here, guys. Um, with this no compromise subwoofer design, I'm not seeing compression at 123 decibels at 11 hertz. Normally all the subwoofers I've measured in the past, once you start getting close to volume zero or maybe at the max volume plus two, you're already starting to see some compression. So here I'm hitting volume plus six on my AVR and I wasn't seeing compression. And in all honesty, 
I gave up before the subwoofer did, guys. This is the point where I didn't want to wreck anything. I, I mean, I'm still running a speaker when I'm when I am running room measurements. There's still a speaker engaged, so I didn't want to wreck that speaker and go any louder. Um, but I just wanted to say that this is a testimony to what Nathan has designed here. No compression at 123 and actually almost 124 decibels here at 22, basically 23 hertz. We're hitting 124 dB and still no compression. Uh, don't ignore this area right here. Uh, as you can see, the, the gap is actually pretty standard all the way through once I started changing my um, volumes because here I was going up by three decibels and then I started going up by two just because I wasn't sure how my system would handle that loud of a volume. And again, this is just my room right here, so just ignore that. Um, but yeah, as you can see, a no compromise subwoofer does give you no compression. All right, so let's move on here. So that was the compression testing. And then I did uh, before and after Odyssey. And so after Odyssey, so this should give a pretty clear picture here. So this is what it was before Odyssey. We had this big dip here and a little bit of some peaks. And then the red line here is after Odyssey. So you can tell I actually just with Odyssey without any more EQing other than Odyssey, you get a very linear response. Uh, this is a pretty good line guys, uh, considering it was just Odyssey and it was all automatic. Um, yeah, we're hitting about 115 decibels at 11 Hertz but that line is pretty smooth and this is no smoothing as you can see here there's no smoothing turned on so i was pretty impressed after running odyssey i got this response i was happy with that and that's between my tv 3612 behind my main listening position mixed with the lfe 24 ultra in the front left corner all right guys so that pretty much sums up the rue measurements uh, as you can see it does put out some pretty impressive numbers with no EQ, we're hitting about 123 dB at 11 Hertz. And with max extension, we're hitting about 126 dB at 11 Hertz. So some pretty impressive numbers to say the least. All right, guys, if you wanna know any more about the performance, make sure to drop your comments down below. Uh, I'll try and answer those possibly in a future video, but I really was impressed with this performance. I couldn't have asked for any better in all honesty. So just on a side note, uh, I did have a friend down the other day to take a look at the TV3612 because he was interested in purchasing it, which he did end up purchasing. Uh, but when I did give him a demo of the funk, <laughs> he actually said that he was having trouble breathing. He could feel it in his chest. He had to basically control his breathing. So it is that type of output, guys. It is on what you would call the extreme side, and that's really what I was looking for uh, in my subwoofer, and I did find it with the LFE24 Ultra. All right, guys, so that uh, I think pretty much sums up the performance. Like I said, if you guys are interested in more details on the performance, drop your comments down below and I'll do my best to answer them. So moving on to the sound quality of this unit. So again, the theme of no compromises continues here. As you can see from the distortion levels, you get clean, super powerful, accurate bass that does not compress even at extreme levels for a single subwoofer. You get what you pay for, ladies and gents. The subwoofer really does provide it all. I've had many different subwoofers in this room and as many as four at a time and I've never experienced bass like this single subwoofer can produce. Even the Quad 18s and the TV3612s don't stand a chance against this single driver on the Funk. The TV3612s are fantastic subwoofers, but the Funk is just leagues above them. The 24 inch driver can and will blend right in for music as well. It isn't always earth shattering massive output. It can be subtle and provide great low end for music. Then pop in a movie and let the shit-eating grins ensue as it produces the hard-hitting, shake-the-house type bass with pinpoint accuracy. Okay, so that pretty much sums up the my thoughts on the sound quality, guys. I really can't fault this subwoofer. Um, it produces staggering output. It can blend right in with music and be subtle as well. It really does do it all. All right, guys, so now moving on to my final thoughts. This subwoofer really is a no-compromise subwoofer. I think Nathan Funk must be a big fan of the first Jurassic Park. You know where John Hammond says, spared no expense? That seems to be the philosophy Nathan followed when building the subwoofer. That being said, I can point out two possible faults. It won't be a fault for everybody, but it will be for some. The first is the price. Yes, you get what you pay for, but this subwoofer will not be for everyone and their budgets. But it really is worth the price in my humble opinion. If this subwoofer is within your budget, you would not be disappointed in any aspect of it. The other negative aspect that I can think of that would apply for some is the WAF or the WIFE acceptance factor. 
Not that this subwoofer doesn't look classy and worth having front and center in my opinion, but you can't escape the fact that it is huge. And unless behind an acoustically transparent screen, it does stand out like a 300 pound, five foot tall subwoofer would. I can definitely see this not getting approved by some wives. I'm just glad my wife supports this crazy hobby and lets me get as crazy as I'm willing to go with it as long as I don't have to put us in debt to do it. So moving this into the house did get me years worth of stink eye, but she was still awesome enough to help. If looks could kill, I would have died a thousand deaths when I started dismantling the banister and the rungs to get it down to the lower level. For those of you out there that have wives who support this crazy hobby, it wouldn't be an issue for you. Although I would say that this subwoofer is worth a few nights spent in the doghouse. So other than that, um, this subwoofer is amazing in all aspects. If you are looking for truly staggering output without compression that comes in a premium handcrafted package and can be adjusted with built-in DSP, look no further guys, you have found it. I have zero regrets about my decision to purchase this subwoofer and I don't imagine anybody else would either. The only regret I can think of is not having two of them. And that is a regret I hope to remedy fairly soon, so stay tuned. All right guys, so that's it. We, you finally reached the end. Thanks to all those that did stick around till the end. And if you did enjoy the more in-depth review, please do leave your comments down below and let me know. If you are interested in checking out any of Funk's offerings, check the description, I've left his website link in there. If you are looking at purchasing one, I would definitely be curious to know which one you're looking at, so leave it in the comments below. If you guys are into audio and home theater, please consider subscribing, and make sure you tick the bell icon so you can be notified about my next unique videos coming up. If you guys do like the content, please consider hitting the like button, it really does help encourage me to keep going with these videos. If you guys truly are into audio and home theater, I have some awesome supportive Facebook groups. If you are interested in joining those, I would be happy to welcome you guys in. And make sure to check out my Instagram as well, the link is in the description. Alright guys, thanks for joining me for another one, and as always, stay techie.